Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. Old Faithful just went off. You can see it's really steamy. We're currently going through a um, magnetic storm. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but because of the solar flare off the sun, it's going to increase earthquakes around the world. And yeah, it definitely affected Yellowstone. Yeah. Um, they had a, supposedly, magnitude 3.1 earthquake just a little while ago um, i think it was larger i'll show you since i got a new computer because my other one went belly up um, the swarm program for some reason i'm having problems uh, marking the earthquakes uh, this one here on the left is from the borehole the borehole there at um, the Madison River area, and there's that earthquake. So it's going to take me a while to figure out why the program is not working correctly on my new computer. Um, I could go to my old computer and try and, you know, figure out the magnitude. I used to be able to click, like, right there and then figure out where the... Uh, Earthquake probably ended. Looks like we got another one right there, and I would click it there. And then it would give me the magnitude. But this is definitely larger than a magnitude 3.1. And this is, again, from the borehole there at the Madison River area. So it only picks up the earthquakes that are happening um, there under the ground because it's a very deep well under the ground. Doesn't pick up anything outside. Of that location you can see we got a couple other small earthquakes right there and right there let me go to the um, seismic signature okay we'll go back there have to close it because it still does the same thing like my other computer goes small on me now this is all fault movement when you see sharpened points uh, on the monitors for the seismic signature that means the ground is popping. I'll go to this other one in a minute. Some are a little bit rounded here, but let me go down here to this supposed 3.1. There was one small aftershock right there. And yeah, uh, it's a mixture. It's mostly pointed here after that 3.1. But you can see we got magma movement, magma ascending. And this is that signature. And not as sharpened points. Some are rounded, which means we got magma ascending from this earthquake, rising up, fracturing the ground more. And that's probably why we had this small aftershock. I haven't had a chance to see if they are reporting it yet, but probably not. See that? That's all magma movement. Let me draw oh, we'll go back see that's all rounded let me go back over here there's another small one right there if your ears are ringing it very well could be because of this geomagnetic storm that is occurring it says um, from yesterday and and then through today g3 and g2 um, a coronal mass ejection the cme are erupting on the solar material in a strong magnetic field uh, when they arrive at earth on earth the geomagnetic storm can result watches of a g3 level are infrequent but not uncommon um limited minor effects such as technological infrastructure possible yeah it could affect the uh, fluctuations with power gps and it does affect people's health which i've talked about a lot in the in the past it can cause uh, women who are pregnant to go into early labor. It can cause heart attacks, high blood pressure, and road rage. Yeah, they're not reporting those smaller earthquakes that, ap that happened after the 3.1. Uh, nine kilometers in depth or 5.8 miles. So this would make it in the upper portion of the magma chamber. We also got a 0 0.7. That was even shallower. Um, yeah, we've been having a, a swarm in that location. I'll show you in a minute. Now, that one was only two and a half miles in depth. 
let's see, a 0 0.2, three miles in depth, um, a 0 0.6. Now that was on the 7th, and that was the 7th. And um, this is today, the 3.1. Using Google Earth, here's the location of today's earthquake that probably happened, oh, maybe an hour ago. I had to shut down my computer and restart it. Um, let's see, we got a 3.7. When was that? August 17th. Now, I've talked a lot about this area. I mean, look at all those quakes, and I don't have all of them marked. This is the Madison River area. And it goes into um, um, Earthquake Lake, Hedgen Lake. And you know, they got all these different faults that go into this location. And this is the area when it had its last major eruption, a major eruption. Now, there's been 40 smaller eruptions at least since the last major eruption. But this is the area where it all started. It did its what's called an unzipping, multiple eruptions that did a counterclockwise rotation of the unzipping. Think of a zipper. Boom, 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 boom. And when those eruptions got down over here towards Heart Lake, see, it looks like a little heart, don't it? That's when the two resurgent domes collapsed at the same time. One being the Mallard Lake resurgent dome where the camera is located. That's it. this hill that you see that has been slowly rising. And then the um, Sour Creek Resurgent Dome, which is up over here somewhere. Do I have it marked? I don't see it. Yeah, but it's up over here somewhere. I don't know if this area actually has names for some of the fault. Um, I named this right here the Grizzly Lake Fault. Um, that, that, that's just me. So I downloaded the data from three different monitors. Again, the one on the far left is a borehole, borehole 950. The one in the middle is Denny Creek. That's um, closer to Yellowstone Lake. And then the one on the far right, that is the Madison River area. Now this one here is Denny Creek's monitor, and you can see it brought up a lot of heat and a lot of toxic gases. And it's indicated by the coloring. And we'll go to the spectrogram, or the seismic signature, excuse me. Yeah, see magma movement. And it looks like this monitor picked up another small earthquake. There's quite a few of them on here, but that's right there. Yeah, that's a long duration of magma movement. When the uh, they have a long, slow-moving tremor because of crustal pressure pushing up on the ground yeah look how long that lasted let me pull it over a little bit for you some of the uh, uh, tremors were picked up with rounded tops magma movement and some of them are popping up the ground some are sharp and some are round that is another tremor that usgs isn't reporting so we'll go back to the borehole because there's no outside um involvement that it would pick up yeah no outside activity we got another one there we'll go to this um oops sorry about that we'll go to the seismic signature right uh, went small on me i gotta figure out what's going on with this program on my new computer again it looks like mostly fault movement but near the end well before and after it does look like yeah, magma movement and then the pressure is created. But none of these earthquakes are being reported. We got one, two, three, and four right there. And you can see the timeline. Now, remember, many years ago, when their in house geologists got in trouble for spilling the beans, saying that when Yellowstone started having magnitude twos um, earthquakes, they would be concerned. Because at that time, they weren't having magnitude twos or greater. And they're becoming more frequent. Yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, be aware that we're going through a, a solar storm right now. And it does have an, an effect not on not only volcanoes, but um, earthquakes and also your health. So, yeah, 
I'll give you a link to the live webcam down below. Yeah, they got snow there. We got snow here this morning, too. Probably about an inch of snow, and it's currently 28 degrees. My granddaughter was outside making snow angels in the driveway. Yeah, she was having fun. And the dog was up in the window watching her. Oh, anyways. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. As always, we don't know when Yellowstone could go off. Any volcano could go off within 10 minutes with no warning at all. And this is a super volcano. It would affect the Earth globally if it had another major eruption. But there's been 40 smaller eruptions since the last major eruption. I want to show you something, too. Up over here to the top right, that is Yellowstone Lake. And what I have drawn out here at the bottom, that is a lava flow that happened about oh, only 70,000 years ago. It's about a mile deep in thickness. And um, it's about the size of Washington, D.C. Yeah, a mile thick of lava that came out about 70,000 years ago. And that is um, Pitchstone Plateau. Now, there are smaller eruptions. Let me pull this out so you can see. Um, there was one about 2,000 years ago along the Snake River Plateau. Um, that was the Craters of the Moon. Let me, yeah, right, right over here. I got it drawn out in yellow. That was only 2,000 years ago, and Native Americans talk about witnessing that eruption. Smaller eruptions can also be devastating, not as bad as a super eruption. They're hoping the next eruption, when it does occur, would be about the size of um, Mount St. Helens, I think a little bit bigger than the eruption of Mount St. Helens. But the ash uh, would contaminate all the water, kill off all the crops within, you know, a certain location, depending on the winds and things like that. Black Butte Crater. Now that one, that lava field, that erupted about 12,000 years ago. And then the link to this other lava field, well, when I copied the link address, it's been removed. Then we got Hell's Half Acres. Okay, that erupted anywhere between four and 5,000 years ago. You may ask, well, why was there eruptions along the Snake River Plateau if the uh, magma chamber is up to the north? Well, the magma actually still flows. It comes up from the uh, caldera. And, you know, I talked about this yesterday. The actual caldera, um, the plume, for Yellowstone actually comes up, starts um, down by the Gulf of Mexico, and it travels under the crust of the earth and then goes all the way up here to Wyoming and emerges here. But um, so the magma comes up probably on the uh, east side of Yellowstone Lake. That's where the plume is currently coming up. But the magma is actually traveling under the ground going west and that's why you have all the hot spots and all the activity for the uh, madison river area here we go here's a good image of showing the magma plume the yellowstone hot spot it comes up there at the yellowstone super volcano the caldera where it's currently at and let me zoom in a little bit you can see hell's half acres and the craters of the moon see how the magma is traveling getting shallower and shallower in that location. Because of plate tectonics, the hot spot is actually moving uh, to the northeast. Um, it may look like it's moving, but it's not moving. It's actually the crust of the earth that is moving northeast. Here's an image of a reminder of how small um, hydrothermal eruptions can do a lot of damage and injure a lot of people. This one here is the Black Diamond Pool. Yeah, so you can imagine what even a small eruption the damage would make. Would make. Anyways, that's all I have for you right now. Please put your thoughts and comments and questions down below. Thank you very much for watching. Always be prepared for a disaster, especially with world events going on. And be safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.